Greetings, everyone. We have ourselves a, uh, a little close. So we have a Troy built uh, Edger. And uh, no mix and feel kind of gives you a hint of what kind of engine we're dealing with. This is the TB516EC. And uh, it's a four stroke engine, a little tiny four stroke engine. This engine looks very familiar to me. It's, uh, it's an engine I've seen on my, uh, like a, uh, this is somewhat of a scooter that I have, but never, I really got that to work because the carburetor was, uh, I couldn't adjust it. It has the same carburetor as this, so I couldn't lock it in and the, the damn thing was just like running poorly the whole time. So what a waste. And if anybody sees if anybody sees a video and you know of a carburetor that meets the criteria that I need, let me know. Okay, well anyway. So I'll put a I'll pull a link to that dis to that video in the description. We got ourselves uh a carburetor here. It still works. Any fuel. It's a little dark. Oh yeah, there's fuel in there. Okay. So I have to get that out of there because it looks very uh, old. It's yellowish. Um, so you can see if we have spark. A little hard to get to. So I gotta try, maybe take this cover off. It's, so it's, it's poor design. All right, let's do that. Let's get the fuel out of here. And most likely it's just a carburetor issue. We'll check and see if we have spark. Check the cylinder, see what the condition's like. And then we'll, uh, we've got oil here. So we're gonna check the oil level also before we try to start it. This uh, jump start technology stuff, I tried a while ago to uh, get a, like a socket to go in there. I thought I could buy one, but none of nothing worked. These are like a really specific size. I'll try again and see what this is, just out of curiosity. Four. T25s we need to remove. Off. Look. I see. So we're just gonna go, go into plastic. It looked like that. So we got four of those. Oh no. They're different. These go into metal. And then plastic so let's see what do we got so we have two that go into metal and two that go into plastic okay down here at the bottom these two are going to be the ones that go into the the metal these two up top go into plastic remember plastic ones have the uh they have the uh the thread that looks like this see how See how big that thread is? It's gonna go into plastic. And the metal ones look like this. Good. Alright, let's uh see there's something else holding this on. Something, something. Oh, right there is another one right here. Sorry. So that one looks like it goes into plastic also. No, I mean metal. Yep, I'm correct. So three metal and two plastic. Let's pull that off. Looking promising. So another one? Ah, oh, there's another one right here. So it's not ideal, but I'm trying to give you the best shot possible. It's right here. I'm just gonna try to snake the extension in here. I'm lifting the engine up. In 
This is also going to go into plastic. So we have three that go into plastic and uh, three that goes into. Uh, there you go. So that's that. All right, so let's check and see if we have spark. Uh, this is the. Uh, this part right here is like a. It's a one, two, three. Four. Yeah. So there's no. Um, I don't have a sock. You know, like a. What do you call it? Uh, the metric or standard just doesn't fit in there. This is like a little bit of a special size. It's like somewhere between five, um, five and a half, and five in metric. And then this is a SAE inches. Um, I don't know if I got that right or not, but either way, uh, this doesn't. Uh, Three sixteenths is too small, and uh, seven thirty seconds is too large. So it's like some weird specific size that they have that makes you wanna. They make you wanna, you know, have to buy that tool to spin it. You know, um, someday I'm gonna try to get some money to make it for me. Uh, that's the plan. So what I want to do is. Uh, Check for spark, right? So we got the spark plug. This is the uh, boot ray. I'll put took that off. It's gonna see. If I turn it over. Um, I think we need to like hold the as like a brake or something like that. I'll show you what I mean. It's this thing here. That red handle. So, probably gotta like clamp that down or something like that. So, give me a second. Yeah, I'm wrong. You don't need to hold that red handle I just talked about. Look right here. All right, so we got spark, right? I don't like the pull start on this, but whatever. We do have spark. If you saw it, just do it again. So you did see that. So we do have a spark. Um, let's uh, check oil level. Let's see what we're working with. Okay, there is oil. Just amateur move. We got spark. You know, let's check and see if we have a functional spark plug. So this is going to be five eighths. A cheap tool. Sounds like a terrible date, doesn't it? Cheap tool. And before I do that, I do want to get all this crud away from the spark plugs. So it doesn't fall in the engine. Let me take this all the way out. We're also gonna, I'm just going to see if the uh, Spark plug. It's, just, it's been running a little rich. It's kind of dark. The plug is... Okay. Let's see if we have some spark. Yep. Sure do. Plugs. Super, super, super good. Awesome. All right. Uh, all things lead into carburetor. I can tell you that. I'm gonna look inside the cylinder and check and see what we got. Let's see if it's uh, good. Okay, so we get an engine that works. Uh, looks like. I don't know, 
but this blade. All right, well, anyway, engine works. Probably should have kept that elevated a little bit more. So at this point, we know we have an engine that will run, right? We've got a pretty good amount of compression on the engine. I want to point this out. See all that soot right there? I mean, this is a, there's a high chance that this is going to be very much contaminated. So I'm going to have to remove the exhaust, clean that. Um, we have a carburetor here that needs to be addressed. There are some, let's see, yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's a large to see. See that? Kind of wetness here. Yeah, that means there's fuel pissing all over the place. And I don't really know what, how bad of a condition it is, but I'm going to pull these two off and go from there. So let's get this muffler off. We have two T25s. I'm going to go through the, the gate. Go through the cage here, try to pull it out. Oh. Might not be that easy. Can I? Oh. I can probably can sneak it out without having to do that. So T25 right here. Good. Right. Okay, so yep, get those out. Actually, get an even better look down the. Uh, actually, I can't. I think the uh, cylinder itself. Won't, I won't have access to see what's going on down there. The piston that is. Um, we have some valves up top so we're gonna need to take this off and check the valve clearances. I'll put this in top dead center. We'll do that kind of last. Um, yeah. And it's too much of a fight just to get an air cover off. There you go. It's pretty, pretty oily in there. It's, uh, it's pretty bad. Got an air filter. Oh my god. What is going on? It's just. Yeah. Not much gonna, not much gonna run well around here. All this stuff. Okay, so we gotta get this carb off. So T. Yep, it's T uh, T25. Oh, there's two of them. Sorry. I'll give you a better shot. Yeah, that's better. There's two. There's another one over here. Alright. Okay. So before we do that, let's just gonna look at the uh, carburetor. Um, okay. So right here, under here, right? You have a green line, a green line, and a black line. And you come around in here, the black line's on the outside. So I'm just gonna try to do that just to help us remember. Either way, we would we would know what to do. We would we would know what to do. So this is like a little bit of a stack. So.
I need to get uh, that fell. So that goes around inside of there on top of the uh, carburetor. It's a gas. All right. So we have to get this out. Looks like. Oh, okay. So this here goes in the back. Pop that off. Right. We want to. I just need to get this throttle linkage out. Okay. Well, now that works. That that's attached to the red. Red little latch we have, but. Just wanna. Oh yeah, that's that's better. Just peel that off. Take this linkage out. Okay, there you go. Now we have a free carburetor. Right. There we go. So yeah, that's our carburetor. Very typical. I've seen this one before many times over. It's not uncommon. That should be it. Should we clean the carburetor? I'll have to fix this um, very gimpy what do you call it? Uh, pull start line. It's a little, little, uh, little gimpy. Um, Looks like this is the uh, for the exhaust. Uh, what do you call it? unburnt fuel? We'll come back and, and get uh, vented. Mm hmm. So what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Uh, yeah, we gotta dig into that carburetor and see uh, what the condition is. So I'm looking at the uh, fuel line. So I just want to double check and see if there's a, you know, what what do we have here? Okay, so the black line is going to be the pickup because this has a. Uh, this black line has the uh, filter on it. So that's good. And this is going to be a return, the green line. So they're both pretty good, so we're going to be able to reuse them. No, they're not brittle or anything. Okay. Uh, Alright, so we want to uh, pull this carb apart. Just these are, so, these are Phillips. Uh, before you proceed, I want, you know, it's good to identify the carburetor. So this is going to be a uh, Walboro. Kind of see it here. Maybe it's a little glary Walboro. And then right here, you can see some. Uh, identifier and the identifier string so this is going to be the w y l b carburetor w y l b i've been burnt many times with uh carb kits and carburetors uh, you know, sometimes what happens is that the surface is warped, and then you have a situation where, as you pressurize things, it's not getting any better. It just kind of leaks out air, you know. So there is a test I've developed for that. Uh, I use my Mighty Vac 
and I push air through the carburetor, just to, and I submerge the carburetor in water just to see if there's any um, bubbles. And also, the thing about carburetor rebuild kits is that a new carburetor is, for the most part, pretty much the same cost. So it's, it's like I think mean, you know you're you're either just doing it because you want to really save time, but you're not really saving much more than time. Okay, so this is a stack, right? And uh, we have this check ball here facing that. Sorry, that check ball facing that. So we remove this from the stack. The primer bulb, that's the primer bulb right there. Remove that from the stack. Uh, hmm. Not sure. Okay, so here's our diaphragm. This it looks kind of warped already. See right there? Now, it should be more springy than this. It's a little, little stiffy, stiff, stiff. Right. So, yeah, it's a little stiff. Alright, so. So I tend to like to wait a little bit. Yeah, you know, so what we'll do is uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, look for a carburetor rebuild kit for this before we proceed. And then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of pull this apart. I like to do it together the same day because uh, over time I've figured out I've, I have to accept my limitations my, with my memory for these things. So I'll get the carb kit, we, we, we will rebuild this together, and then We'll go from there. Sounds good. All right, I lied. We're gonna we're gonna continue. So we got this spring, this spring sat right here, like that. And uh, the reason why we're continuing is because I can see it's pretty pretty straightforward. Those two holes right there on this gasket will go like that, and this just sits on top. So we can, yeah. Wow. I can keep that out. That's trash. Well, that goes the other parts. And then we need to get the spring here. Put the spring away. Save the spring. The spring is good. This part we need to remove. So what I was saying to you is. Uh, This surface here, this maiden surface here, right there, there's gonna usually there's a warp, and uh, not usually. If there is a warp, I'm screwed. But I can't see that. So if you know what happens is like changing the carburetor doesn't really prevent. Or Shas exposes the fact that this thing is uh, kind of screwed up, you know. So I'm operating like I'm trying to save this carburetor, but I want you to see what you would have to do if you were going to try to go the cheap route. I'm not particularly keen on that. 
So I like to try to fix things properly. Um, so yeah, yeah, you get a razor blade maybe. Yeah, let's get a razor under here. Let's try to razor some things up. Razor some things up, but yeah. That's a funny word using the word razor. Okay, so that's the carburetor. So you'd have to do some stuff like that to try to save it. But you can see right here some is left back. So this this is shot. This yeah, that's just shot. Uh we have a main jet right here to suck fuel up. This might get a new gasket on this side. Uh, Want to take this off? Yeah, we do. So we're gonna dip that in the ultrasonic cleaner also. Hmm. Can we get that off? Oh. Okay. So this is gonna be our idle back that off a lot so we can get access to that screw. So it's backed up all the way. Screws. Give that a good wash. The ultrasonic cleaner. Pop this off. There you go. Pop that off. We'll clean that out also. Ultrasonic cleaner. Over here, we have this gasket. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, this is going to be our diaphragm. See, like it doesn't rebound. Like, uh, so in other words, so I push it, it just stays there. So it's kind of stiff. <laughs> so this diaphragm is um, no longer functional. So this would be the issue why the uh, carburetor can't. Another issue why the carburetor cannot function. So that's that. We have a needle and seat. Uh, we have a, s a strainer here, so the I tend to not like to do these. Yeah, okay. I gotta get a better, better screwdriver. So I need to. I would like to unscrew that. Yeah. Alright, so we got ourselves a better, better screwdriver. Okay, so be careful with this. See, it's like it's trying to lift up and go flying away. There's a spring underneath there. Once that falls on the ground, you're going to need a whole lot of Hail Marys to prevent yourself from ending up in Satan's little love palace. Get the drift. 
Okay, so that's that little screw there. There's a needle and seat. Lift that up. One, two, three. We have a spring here. Alright, and then we also have the actual needle. So here's the needle. Now with this, what you're looking for for a failure point is uh, you're looking for uh, a kind of uh, I'll put that on the ultrasonic cleaner. You're looking for a needle that doesn't have a sharp tip anymore. So that's kind of like what you're going to look for. Uh, the rebuild kit will most likely come with with that new needle. So these are all the parts of the carburetor. Yeah, there are those three gaskets, spring, screw to hold the carburetor down, needle spring. This hook kind of holds the uh, top of the needle and then this goes across to kind of hold it in place. Alright, so those are the pieces we need. Um, all of these pieces here, we're gonna yeah. so these pieces here, we're gonna just wash them by hand. Get all that stuff out of the way, all the plastic pieces. But you can't really put any plastic stuff in the ultrasonic cleaner because the kind of medium that I'm using is um, just destroys plastic. I'm, it's swimming in a, a carpet cleaner. So, all right. So we'll, uh, oh yeah, I forgot about this. We'll put this also in the ultrasonic cleaner. That's those screws. We have three of them. Uh, I want to pull this off also because there's a little filter behind there. Let me get that out. Let's see. Oh wait, you know, what? let me uh, be a little bit more vigil here. I don't want to lose the uh, carburetor parts just in case we can't get a carb kit. Uh, so let's put all the carburetor parts in here. size smaller than a T25 so it's going to be like a T T20 most likely a T20 And that's the filter. See how dirty that is? It's not clogged, but you want to make sure you, you know your engine can breathe properly. It needs to exhale. So think about it that way. If you can't exhale, you're gonna suffocate. So yeah, we're gonna throw that in the ultrasonic cleaner. There should be a gasket here, I think. Oh, we'll just leave it out. Alright, so this is going to go in the ultrasonic cleaner also, and um, yeah, we'll put this in there also, that was pretty grimy. And that's it. See you in a couple days. So the carburetor is uh, pretty much clean, everything turned out pretty well, as you can see. Um, we have a couple things we got to do, there's some gasket material there from the... Uh, the larger gasket. I need to kind of get that off. Maybe 40. Okay, so you want to check for passages. So you want to look through that hole there. I don't know if you can see it or not. See if there's any lights. 
There we go. See that? Right there. There you go. Okay. So that hole needs to be clear. That's where the it uh, sits, the uh, needle. So we have uh, a little bit of hose left over from the line that was on it before that broke off. Look at this, had some gasket material. I kind of scraped that off already. This hole, want to make sure that that hole also is clear. So, mm. look right here. It's a little shadowy. Look right here. Just want to see if we can, we can try to get you a good shot. It's a little small. But this hole, sometimes you need to ream it out, you know, see that? You need to ream that hole out, because uh, there's no way to regulate the high or low on these carburetors and then you end up with a situation where you can't get the engine to like get any power, it's just running too lean. So, okay, so that's that, that's cleaned. Uh, we need to do some... Uh, cleaning of this stuff with some hot water. So we're gonna do that right now. Blow some compressed air through these passages. So. See that totally pushed that up. So. Make sure you hold it down. So I want to go flying away on you. That's that. It's a little hard to get all the the um, medium out, which is uh, carburetor cleaner. That's from the ultrasonic cleaner. All right. So we need to uh, just kind of get these surfaces a little bit more polished. So put some WD-40 in this bottle. I've got my uh, ex-girlfriend's. Uh, uh, I'm gonna return it to her. Toothbrush. You know, Valentine's Day. Anyway, just kidding. Don't do anything mean like that. I would never do that. No, nope, not at all. Alright, uh, so you see what I'm doing. Just gonna polish that surface a bit. It needs to be. The... Right, this is.
That says her uh, a little kit. If you can read that. And uh, this is what it comes with. So we have these are the old gaskets. So what I like to do is line them up. So Let's see what matches. So uh, that lines up with that. Never really too sure what route to go. Okay, that goes here. Yeah, it's a little different looking. Hmm. If it won't be an issue. And then what is saying I don't know what to do is like this doesn't feel right. I feel like this is what repl replaces that one. This one's a little too thick. So that's gonna match. That matches up with that. Okay, we got a new uh, primer bulb. A new mesh also. The mesh is fine, we're not gonna mess with that. But other than that, we have a new needle. I gave you a couple choices too, so. Here's our needle seat. It's a little o ring there. Okay. And there's also the part that that sits on. So the o ring, that o ring is, uh, it sits inside of the um, carburetor at the bottom. So I'll show it to you. At least, I'm, at least I think. Let me just double check. So this is what the carburetor stack looks like. So when you put it back together, this one's going to look like. Okay, so. Pop that out. Put the new one in. Okay, that's your new bulb. Okay. Let's go from this side. And we're gonna have a gasket like that. Okay, you know what we gotta do before we do that? So I was saying to you the uh the So on this side. Oh yeah, <laughs> silly me. Okay, put that there. Okay. So in here is a. Uh, but a needle sits. Sometimes there's a rubber gasket that goes in there, rubber o-ring. I don't see that on this one, so I do not believe that's what goes in there. If I have a problem with the leaking, I'll know for sure it's missing. So, okay, just something to think about. Uh, you're flashing over here, so I might have to stop and get a new battery. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna not use some of these things we that screen is still good on that side so I'll leave that alone put this new screen back and we don't need this o-ring at least I don't think we do I hope we don't Took my gloves off because this is can be a little bit of a pain to do. So I slide that in there like that. Okay. 
this is gonna go right here like this Then we need a screw. Oh lord, I hate this part. This thing. I mean a spring. This thing. That thing goes flying. Forget it. Your, your day is screwed. I usually do this inside of a bucket. But I guess today I'm risking it. So I'm gonna drop that down in there first. Yeah. And I can kind of come up under. Say that right. And then we need to get this screw here. Right on this side here, we have. This gasket here and so let's try this again. Uh, that spring goes under there. I just want to kind of stack these up. As the spring will push against this plastic -y part. So, see that? That's going to go into that hole. So. Okay, so that's keyed up. Okay, now here, right? We need to put our diaphragm, so it's going to go down, right, like this. And this is what a new diaphragm looks like. See how like springy that is? The whole thing moves. That's how you know you're, uh, that's what you want to check for. Okay. So now, okay, there's a hole. See that hole? There are two holes, one there, one there. You just need to make sure that those holes on the back of this line up with that. So it's hard to mess up because it's keyed. So there you go. Alright, so now we're all back together, right? We need to get uh, the four screws for this. Again, it's there are four really, really long screws. Yeah. I'll show you what they look like. Like that. Cool. Alright. it. So we should have a carburetor as functional or she can we can pressure test it just to make sure. So we forgot to put those two screws back in. When I say we I mean I mean me I forgot. Any one of you out there were like hey don't forget those screws <laughs> Alright, so this is a um, call like barrel style carburetor. Barrel. 
and uh, it's because of that right there. It's like a, like a barrel. It just turns to open and close to let air in like that. So. Yeah. And uh, these sometimes have an adjuster at the top. Like this one doesn't have it. But I know if you run into problems with the uh, adjustment, that's where you would go. So this isn't, there's no way to really adjust this carburetor. Wow, that's, well, that's your idle screw. Let's screw that in. The higher the idle. But that's kind of lame, huh? Actually, if you can get a tool in there and kind of turn it, you can adjust the fuel. You can meter the fuel, how much comes in and out. Just, uh, looks, yeah, looks like a, some specialty tool will go in that little hole right there. It's a weird shape. It's not a circle all the way. Anyway, that's how you do it. You want to adjust that if you want to get it to fine tune to run it to get it to run in the most fine-tuned manner. Got a muffler screen we gotta put back. Make sure that's clean. You can see through it. This is gonna be a small little black one. So a T20. going further, I want to address this uh, pull cord, and uh, I can't look around to see how this is attached underneath. It's, there's nothing holding it, so it's just holding on to this plate right here. And then this, so there's a bolt, there are bolts back here behind this cover that's holding that on. So we got to take this off. So we disassemble, give it a stop. This is going to be, um, you can either use a 24 millimeter. I, I know this is a 15 16 and it's not reverse thread. Let's see if I can probably can spin it off without stopping it from. Yeah, I don't know about that. Let me uh, jam something in there. Yeah, like this. Yeah, that's because. Yeah, it's a it's a lefty Lucy. Okay. So. Oh, it's dark on this side of the moon, isn't it? Mm, damn it. That's that. Okay, this blade here, there is no it's gonna mark it. Rolls the outside to see if there is a right orientation. And we have T40s, so we have three of them. I'm assuming I have to take these off, you know, because I'm trying to get that plastic cover. Trying to get access to all the bolts. That's, that's that. Let's go through those. Looks like that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Huh. Wait. So just so we don't screw this up, we need to, we got a washer here, a washer spacer kind of combo. Back here we have two barons, so just want to keep that. So 
sort of kind of like that. Okay, so that's that. And then this obviously is belt driven, so there's a belt back here. Um, yeah. So we, I just want to get this cover off, so we're good. We can leave this alone. Leave. Leave. I say lead this alone. What kind of accent is that? Lead this alone. You know, lead this alone. Alright, so that's a uh, T25. Yeah, we're not leading anything. We're going to leave it alone. There's our belts. Okay, so man, we gotta get all this stuff off to get or not. I think this screw here and that one. Those are the only ones. Maybe that one and this one. I don't know. Alright, so I think uh I think these, that one right there, that one there, and that one are the only three that are holding this onto this side piece, so let's find out, right? Well, looks like that just goes into plastic. It was a little, a little wimpy. Yeah, it's coming out. Okay. All right. And there we go. We got an engine that's free. These. That's what we're. So we're looking at. Sorry. So I have three of those. Yeah, we should be able to get this out of the way. Yeah, there you go. Alright, so what we have is a, a mountain plate. That's plastic. This is plastic that makes sense why the screws have those big threads. And uh, it's going to mark it. So. I know that uh, this is the outside, and uh, these three holes have to line up with that. It's also kind of it's keyed here, so I'm assuming somewhere down here it's going to slide into that. So keep that alone. And then, if only this was easier, uh, we gotta get. I'm going to try to leave all these cables attached because they're fine, but uh, we need to separate the yeah. Okay, so this pull start cover is a uh, it's looks like it's a T20 T27 yeah, T25. Nope, T25. Okay. It's your T25. So it's going to pop this off. Try not to move too many things, you know what I mean? Thing 
famous last words. Well, it feels like it should. It's got these. Yeah, these are thin threaded so they're going into metal. There's nothing easy around here. Anyway, so this this has to come off and it's like held on with a, a little T20 here, so let's go ahead and pop that off. Hmm. This turns something. Hmm. I gotta stop the engine from turning. Yeah. Okay. Just got a piece of rope. Let's stuff it down in there. So all I'm doing is filling up the space at the top of the cylinder. In the jug I'm filling up the space with rope. So I guess you can think of it as like a rope lock. And hopefully. that. Looks like it's got some Loctite on there, so I'm gonna, gonna have to do that when I put it back. Bingo. So this is gonna be my clutch. Get a little, little gasket here. Got a little metal spacer-ish. Okay, and then <laughs> all that just to get a freaking pull start off. Jesus. Um, this has, uh, it says off. Three eighths. Oh, there's two. There's two, uh, two of these. Not one, but two. Okay. So you have two spacers. So we got to figure out how to get this off. Okay, so off is going to... See, the arrow is going that way. All right. All right so we got a chain wrench on here. And... Uh, should be able to kind of turn this... That's it. So this is off with an arrow because you need, sometimes you, need, you just don't know you're going left or right to pull these things off. Okay, so we should have a what there a washer here. Okay, and now, Jesus, now we can get to the pull stop. So I got to give you a bit of view called the manager cam. Um, so here we go. So that's your arrow for orientation. Pull on it, that's what it does, right? So we need to pull, get this out of here. And 
And that knot, I don't think I'm going to fiddle with that much. So. I'm going to cut that off, get that off, right? Okay. This is what we got to do. It's going to be tricky because it's going to come through. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, it's definitely going to come right out. It's totally fine. So we got to put this into here, this groove. Put the rope into that groove. Turn, wind this to the right, like this, okay. Do it one more time, put it in that groove. So, I don't want to think about clockwise anti-clockwise, just look at the arrow right there. Okay, good. So now we have a lot of like tension to pull back, right? So to take this now, right, kind of, we need to slide it through that pesky little hole. We got it. Holy cow. Okay, so this is what I had to do. I uh, cut off the edge that was burnt. Oh no! No! Did I just. Yeah, I did. I'm not gonna lie, this is a pain in the butt. Uh, so I had to cut this and really squeeze it down really tight so it's like really sharp on the end. And that gave me the opportunity to push that through like that. And once that's through, tie that knot, man. Go get a drink of something. I don't know what you're into, but I'm just telling you, go get it. Alright, so there you go. Pull starts not so gimpy anymore. That is a pain in the butt. It's a terrible design. So to get this back together, you want to just want to line it up. You'll see. Watch it from this side. Make sure it uh, meshes together well. Put this back. Oh wait, I'm forgetting something. Shoot. Well, yes, I am. <laughs> Pull starts is going to explode. Okay, this. We will put that back. So, these three shiny screws. I have days in the church to can solve that problem or react. Okay. This is the sleeve that came off. This goes onto there. It's like a spacer. Not like it, it is a spacer, sorry. Should have four screws.
right? Is that correct? Yeah. Gonna use some WD-40. So that looks so much better. Uh, we still got to continue to put this clutch back on. So we had two washers here, spacers. Um, this went on. And this had some Loctite on it. So we're going to Gonna have to put some more Loctite on that. Uh, gas tank here. There's two of them. And that is gonna sit on this side. Yeah, it goes under here. Oops. Goes into here. Probably now would have been the best time to do the oil change too. So we got this back into here. Slide this on here. Looks like there's only one way to get it right, so you don't have to worry about lining it up. Alright, come on. There you go. Okay, so once that is set, let's make sure I'm recording. Okay, we gotta catch uh, these three long bolts here. Yeah, so they are gonna. So we got those start by hand. So, yeah, we're good. You would think you'd want to go into a uh, metal if you if you have like something that just kind of like holding on here, you know, but whatever. I guess making it last would be stupid. Okay. 
Make sure that belt is on that groove on this pulley over pulley over here. This is tensioner there. Just turn it, turn it, turn it. Yeah, that's on. And you need to make sure that that belt's aligned. Okay, we are good to go. Every time I drop something, you get a drink. It's like a drinking game now. That goes into here. Like that. This goes into here like that. So go on first. Doesn't matter. So we got a blade. Right. Blade. Oh, you know what? I did that too soon. This has to uh, get screwed on. Okay, no problem. No problem. Not the worst thing can happen. Frank.
Right, so we're going to do this valve clearance, right? You want to do this when the engine's cold. And I got this, uh, these parts from my OTC um, compression, deluxe compression set. This is the M10 adapter right here. And then I just uh, attach this part to it and I put a balloon at the end. And what I'm trying to do is uh, when the balloon blows up, that means I'm on the compression stroke. And uh, you can see it just by opening it up and you can tell from watching the valves, you know, but this is one way to make sure you don't mess up. So we watch the balloon, All right, we want it to just pull in the pull start, wait for it to be blowing up. Oh, see it's going down again. So. That would be your compression stroke right there. So at this point, right, you are, you can kind of look into there now and see what's going on with the, the piston. So, uh, so it's coming up still. That is, if you watch the top of the uh, screwdriver, So somewhere right around there is where we stop at because it hit the top and then the valves open. Okay, so we're going to adjust the valves. So this is a T25. I'm going to kind of pop this valve cover off. I would say blow some compressed air over this just to make sure you don't get too much debris in there. Put the spark plug back in just to keep stuff out. Okay. So, so these are our valves. And they should be 0 .00. 0. Okay, so five, so five thousandths of an inch. It's okay. So the intake's not too bad. Intake would be the side that intakes fuel. This is going to be the exhaust side. Exhaust side's a little loose, so. I'm happy with the intake. Let me tighten it up a little bit, but the exhaust needs to be tightened up. Okay, so it looks like it's a good 10 millimeter. All right, so this is a eight mil right here, and uh, five thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. I'm just. It. Okay, a little. See, so want some drag, but not too much. So there you go. It's not. Tighten that up just a little bit more. Okay, perfect. That's it.
So those valves are adjusted. I need to put this uh, spark roll back in. This is 5 eighths, just to let you know. Get this carburetor on, and we'll leave this off so we can. Uh, we gotta put the exhaust back on. Sorry, I forgot. This is a little tricky to get on here without blocking your view, but there's uh, one, two, three holds. So I saw a really neat movie last night. I think I think you would appreciate. It's a dystopian kind of low budget dystopian film starring this uh, antagonist is this uh, girl she's uh, really dressed her up to look more masculine well sorry more androgynous came out in 2022 which is uh, the current year that you're watching this video and uh, it's like it's like named after her. I forgot the name. That's how much I like it. Anyway, it's uh, really cool. It's an awesome blend of uh, biotech. Escher, Escher. That's her name. Yeah, I mean that's the name of the movie. Escher. <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure. Either way, this thing is amazing. I mean, just. The world building is off the chain for such a low-budget film. They've done a really good job at uh, just building that world. The um, you know they use this typical kind of uh, tropes uh, storylines, not like super advanced in regards to its originality. But either way, it's still a very original film. They use a lot of, they use the, uh, you know, typical, like, uh, people with privilege will, why am I doing this with my hand? People with privilege will end up having all the resources that they need to survive and thrive. And, uh, you know, that's nothing new, but, but the, the storytelling is amazing. I can tell you is that I highly recommend it. Best, coolest movie I've ever seen. It's rated pretty low too in IMDb. I tend to, I tend to trust fan reviews. We'll go whatever the fans say, but this is one of those movies that you really need to see. I'll try to get the name right. It's a movie called Vesper, V-E-S-P-E-R. Pretty cool. Um, so that's the part number. What I like about it is like, uh, Vesper is really, she is good at biohacking. So, she's trying to figure out how to get seeds. Pretty much like, it's like a commentary on Monsanto. Uh, apparently, like, uh, the wealthy have created a whole, genetically engineered a whole bunch of foods that, such as plants, and the seeds are not able to uh, procreate. And that creates a problem because you need to be able to uh, have a plant that can reproduce, right? So. That's how they keep their lock on society. Control the food, control the land, control the energy supply. You control everything, you know. It's similar to the way Russia is controlling this war in Ukraine and eastern part of Europe. Most of Europe, because they, well, they supply petroleum. And that gives them a heck of an advantage. Um, yeah, and they'll forget the nuclear bomb too. But either way, we gotta get this off. 
Okay. How are we going to do that? Looks like it comes out, but I'm not really sure. Give me a sec. Alright, so... I need to kind of get this out. What's your favorite dystopian movie? I think the worst, scariest one I've ever seen was called Rhodes. Anybody seen that one? Yeah. Let me, uh, let me hear your input about your favorite or scariest or worst. Yeah. The zombie Apocalypse one, that series is pretty good too. I was a big fan of that. I haven't watched it since season nine. Not to say jump to the shark or anything. It's just I was just kind of like, all right, I'm done. All right, so I don't know how the heck to get this out. I struggle with this off camera for a bit. So it was a serious fight. So there's two tabs. You got to push in on this side, pull a little, push in on the other side. Right here. Pull, right? So now that we have that out of the way, we can kind of just so that's our gasket there. And this is the part that I was concerned about. It's not gonna get sealed anymore. So that's that part. Okay, so just want to match it up. See right here. This one's kind of like compromised. Right, so we're gonna slide this over like that. Put that back in. There you go. So the reason why you don't want to compromise that because it needs to be solid so it doesn't slide out because the throttle linkage is on that, you know. Okay. So that's all right. So what do we got? We got these two cables. Um, two. <laughs> yes, I can speak English. Right, we got to cut these off because they're a little brittle at the end here. Oh, that that's just completely shot. All right. It's gonna spare you to struggle, but I'll give you the the tip to one tip, a tip, right? So this fuel line here is the same inner diameter as this green one that's broken. It's a little bit wider, so that means I'm, it's gonna make me fight a bit. Actually, now let me check the other fuel line. Okay, so with this, right, you're gonna just wanna kinda cut it as much as possible on an angle. you can get on it the better. Gives you a better chance of like <sighs> grabbing it. <sighs> it would have been better if this had failed while uh, while it was uh, the tank was open and free for me to like grab you know. But so is life. Okay, we're gonna can I as much as possible of an angle of the cut. Sharper tools too, that helps. <laughs> what is going on here? Because this is going to fight me, right? For the following, oh, I just ruined how much of an angle. Anyway, you get the idea. Get a nice big angle, right? Push it into here. 
and then you're gonna have to reach inside of here and grab it and pull it. That's the hard part. So, best of luck. So let me show you something. So there's an arsenal of tools you're gonna need to try to grab this. Uh, something like bends like this, this, something like that. All right. What I like to do, right? See how much I kind of just made this really long and lengthy. I'm gonna take some silicone spray, right? Spray it on this. Okay. I'll spray a little bit on that hole. And then we just want to slide that in as much as possible. Right. Okay. So at this point, you just gotta kind of work it. Just keep on pushing it in, pushing it in. Do that for a while. As soon as you see it sticking out inside of there, grab grab it with this. And kind of pull it down and through. Okay, once you get it started, you can just it'll slide all the way through. Alright, let's so you see it's in there now, right? Oh that's a pain. It was a, such a pain. Just kind of once you get it in there far enough, there's a grab, right? You are able to get a little bit more leverage on getting this damn thing through. <sighs> you know, so that's what you gotta do. It's gonna take you a little bit of time, but once you get it started, it's pretty much easier to kind of get it through. The nice thing about this is that you don't need it to be really deep in because this is only the return line. You know what I mean? So just get it in enough that you know that fuel's going to end up back in there. Because it's such a tight fit, you end up getting a good seal, you know. All right. Okay, so um, let's get this uh, carburetor back on. So we have to kind of stack these two together. You see that space there? That's going to be where the washer goes, like that. That rubber washer that fell out. And uh, we need to. So it's going to go in like that. And then uh, the carburetor, to get the orientation right, you had to see it's going to go like this because uh, that needs to go up and down. So we're going to slide, slide this linkage in. And it's going to go like that. OK. And then we're going to have to put this on. Now this hose here, this is the hose that, uh, oh, I just dropped the, uh, no, I didn't. Okay. This hose is going to go to this here, so I want to put that on. So now we got that there. And, uh, Line that up. Let's push that in. Yeah. It's a little tricky, but look, you can see. Flashing. Okay, flashing. Yes. 
Or choke. Well, we're good to go. So we need to kind of make an executive decision here <clears throat> about the fuel line length. So we need to. This is our return line. We had to cut that. And, uh, once that's cut, that's cut. So I will do a little extra. Like that much. So that goes on to this hose here, the one that's further away from the camera. It's the straight one. And then the curved... The curved one goes to the top, the intake. Okay, it's just like that. Alright, over here we have our air filter. We need to put this in. This is there, like that. That's mm -hmm. there. So we need to get some fuel in here. I'm probably gonna, yeah, I don't want to use regular gas. I want the client to uh, to make that choice for themselves so they can ruin ruin it on their own time. So what we'll do, we're gonna go, we're gonna go to the store and get some uh, gasoline that has no ethanol in it. So there really is no easy way to get oil out of this thing, so as in an oil change. So just want to kind of tilt it. Tilt it. Yeah, I'm gonna just pour it right out of funnel. I kind of keep a sock inside of it because these things are constantly dripping oil even though after you clean it out. So I'll use it and I'll flip it upside down. Like that, so that way the sock just absorbs it. And with this, we want to kind of put some stuff around this because when it drips out, it won't be too bad. We need to use 30 weight, um, SAE 30 oil. And uh, what you want to do is just kind of put oil into it until it just starts to come out. So there you go. Okay, so we wanna put some fuel in it. We got some four cycle fuel. And this is uh, no ethanol. Very important. It's not economical to do it on a large scale, but keep buying these cans, but uh what happens is uh, you can, uh, for the most part, just just for testing purposes, use these things. You know, and there is a gas station uh, that you can search. Let's look here uh, for ethanol-free gasoline stations across America and Canada. There's a link for that. I'll show it to you. Share it with you. And the so here's our primer ball. Let's see if it's uh, able to create suction. Can it pull fuel in? I 
I see a bit of a leak. Do I? Yep, I sorta of, kinda do. That's so where that's leaking from. I think I got these right, don't I? I mean, this fuel in this line here. I think getting into the carburetor. Well, oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, but my carburetor is leaking. Pissing fuel right out from underneath that, uh, yeah, it's just terrible. Oh, that's terrible. Darn it. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we kind of knew that was a possibility, didn't we? Why is it not sealing? Alright. It's leaking from underneath this, between this black part. Alright, so this is the problem, right? If you look right here, it's leaking from underneath this black part and uh, I tightened the screws a little bit more to see if it stopped it didn't stop it um, usually when you hit a primer bulb it sucks in a lot of fuel real fast so you can tell that this something's not right with this carburetor so see how little fuel that kind of sucks in nothing should be filled it just gets it usually gets filled really fast and uh, this is barely getting filled and uh, it leaks so I wipe it off right. did this a couple more times you'll see more and more fuel just kind of collects underneath it right there it's new stuff so yeah I'm a little sometimes this gets warped you know and then it just doesn't seal I'm gonna take this off and double check make sure this is all aligned all right so here's the old carburetor right uh, here's our new one our replacement and uh, it has been it's a little different because the uh, the top here, basically it's not branded anymore is what I'm trying to say. So I hate when they do that because if you are trying to work on this in the future and it fails, you don't even know what carburetor to get, you know? Alright, so that's that. It's pretty much the same thing as that, just no branding. So let's take this off. Uh, we got the, uh, oh, by the way, uh, this is the kit. Um, if you can see it or not. Okay. And it's made in where? All right, don't even bother answering. You already know. Everything's made there. So the let's see green line green lines on the straight
and you'll see we'll, uh, what the heck happened here. Okay, let's take the black alarm off. Okay, so it sucks on this top wire, this double checking. Our turn is going to be on the straight. And you'll see immediately, if you look right here at the primer bulb, how different it behaves. So it fills up with fuel. See that? That is a functional carburetor. The other one we have just wouldn't, couldn't hold pressure. And that was a data giveaway because the primer bulb was not getting filled up each push. Okay, I'm gonna put this back together. You don't need to see that, you already know how to do that. And then we'll. All right, let's see if we can get this to start, right? So over here, on that, there's an on and off switch. It's always in the on position. We got it all primed up. That's in the on position. Uh, I raised, elevated this all the way up so the blade doesn't hit the ground like before. Uh, let's see, choke. Um, got one of those positions is choke. We should choke it. Let's choke it. Fuel air mixture needs to be adjusted. show you something so this is the top of the carburetor right 
And inside of here, it's a little hard to see, there is a screw to adjust. So this one also has an adjuster. On top of that black, on top of this brass was this, try to get it without dropping it, was this black um, cap. So yeah, I picked it out by pick. All right. So, <laughs> how you doing, man? She's a little dead, bro. Huh? She's a little dead, Pocahontas. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was Pocahontas. <laughs> man, you know that little Indian girl that comes through here, walk through this place with fresh groceries, got long hair. Uh, nah, I haven't. You probably know her. You know, you yeah, seen her before. You yeah. seen her. Does she, does she, uh... She like this, hey, I think yeah. she got a boyfriend, too. Oh, she can pick up her kid? Yeah, I think. Right there? Yeah. She got that, that long, slick hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call her Pocahontas. She work at first Post? Oh, she does? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, she is beautiful, man. Yeah. I, I got you. I'm waiting for that dummy to fuck up. They always fuck up. Oh, yeah, I know, they do. She gonna get tired of this stinking ass or something. Yep. Oh, uh, get a love. Sure is the best way to go. Wait till it fucks up like a shark in the water. Never trust a guy that's a friend with your girlfriend. Or just hanging out with you, scoping out your girl. It's just gonna make a move sooner or later. Anyway, um, he's gonna make a move. So there's a cap that goes on top of there. So you just wanna like pull that off. And then you gain access to that. I don't think is I don't have a f I don't have a, a flat head. It's a flathead screwdriver that will go in there, but it's got to be really small and thin. And my smallest one, I can't get in there, so I might have to grind it down to uh, get it in there. To adjust it. So update. It's not the most efficient, but you can just kind of like jam your pick down inside of here. And just turn it like that, because it doesn't have a lot of torque on it. Okay, so just pick in there and turn it. That's what I'm doing. Alright, so I gave that screw one full turn counterclockwise. Let's see how that makes a difference. Or not. Uh, up this way is no choke, down is choke. So let's do like a half choke. Alright, no choke. Alright, choke all the way. No choke. A little, bit, a little bit of gas. Okay. No choke. A little bit of gas. The, uh, turn the idle up some. This is the idle screw. Let's go to one full turn in. Let's try that. direction. I'm gonna try to uh, take that off again because I don't, I can't, 
I'm using my pick to like adjust the uh, meter and I can't really get in there that easily. So I'm gonna um, have to pull this all off, do one full turn again counterclockwise, put it back all together and try it again. Okay, so I'll bring you back. Right, round three, fight. Okay, so if you get that reference, comment in the yes. Comment below. Anyway, uh, the why did I turn one more full turn that fuel adjustment, right? And I turned it um, counterclockwise. The reason why is because I'm trying to get that to run in without any uh, choke on. So choke choke off is all the way out, right? I need it to run with the choke off. Right now it only runs like with choke halfway on. Feels like that's where it has the most power, but that's not how it's supposed to be. That's why I do that. So let's see what we what we get now. Okay. Okay. Let's go half choke. Squeeze the handle, a little throttle. No choke, I mean half choke. No choke. So I don't really fully like the little bogging down. It's better. It's running now with uh, no choke, right? So let's pull that carb off again. We're gonna do uh, maybe like a full turn. No, let's do like a half turn. Put it back on. So we'll see how it behaves. All right. Let's see what we get. Half choke, full choke. Let that idle for about 20 seconds.
sounds way better. Let's give it that one half more turn out and uh, we'll see what, there's a little bit of a bog when I go full throttle. So yeah, let's give that one more try, one more try. All right, so we're on uh, fifth try, fifth round. We have like choke in the same position, which is all, which is no choke, okay. Go half choke. No choke. Half choke again. Full choke. Half choke. Top of the RPMs, you know. I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more. Probably do half more out, and then it'll stop, and then I'll go the other way. Or actually, I don't know. Uh, I'll just play around with it. Bring it back. I think I got it. So that's it. I think I can't get any better than what it is. I did one more half turn counterclockwise. It sounded a little bit better than what it was before. So I'll show you, and I think this is it. I can't get it any better. The engine's still warm, so I got choke all the way off. I'm gonna hold the throttle a little bit open. I'll do like half choke, full choke, and then I'll go all the way up to no choke now. the best we can do. Hey listen, if you uh, like this video, go ahead and uh, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to share it too. And uh, definitely let me know what you think we could do better. Uh, this is a fun, simple project. These uh, four-stroke Troy built engines are very common. You know, I see them in a lot of different places. Uh, the next project that I have is also a Troy built, but I think it's a two-stroke. So, we'll, uh, it's a blower. Looking forward to it. It's kind of useful to have when you do when you go to like a roller skate or roller blade uh, at a certain location. You want to clear off the ground. You know what I mean. Anyway, hey, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next video.